Here's how you become an ancient red dragon in D&D. So first of all, I just want to thank everyone for the 1,000 subscribers. You guys are just so Wait cool. a second, dude. I'm pretty sure you already made this video, right? Well, actually, no, I, I made a tutorial on how to become an adult gold dragon, which is a little- Oh, come on, that's the same thing. Red, gold, what's the difference? Well, the last combo I made actually, uh, it, it, it used true polymorph, essentially, to transform into a creature of CR equal to our level. And um, although that's cool, the problem is our levels actually stop at level 20. That's where the capstone is. So I wanted to find a way to break that limitation, to find a way other than true polymorph to become a powerful creature. In this instance, an ancient red dragon, which has a CR of 24. Does that make sense? Uh, whatever. I don't give a shit. So first things first, become the highest level wizard you can be. Because not only do we need access to ninth level spell slots, we are going to be fighting an ancient red dragon to do this, and they are very strong. Then you're going to need access to the spell's magic jar, which is a sixth level spell, and true polymorph, which is a ninth level, and both of which are crucial to make this work. So first thing we need to do is actually find an ancient red dragon and burn through its legendary resistances. The easiest way to burn through these saves is with dex based saving spells, because the dragon only has a plus seven to dex saves. Pathetic. Once that's done, we're going to cast true polymorph on the dragon and hope it fails the saving throw and turn it into a peasant. Now I know there are funnier things to turn a dragon into than a peasant, but this isn't all about memes. We do actually need it to be a humanoid for the next part of the plan to work, because this is where it gets fun. This is where the fun begins. Next, we cast Magic Jar, which basically means our soul leaves our body and goes inside a magic jar. From there, we can use our action to possess a humanoid within 100 feet of us, and we're going to choose the peasant we just created. By possessing it, you gain control of his body, and its soul is trapped inside the magic jar. Now you simply drop concentration on true polymorph and kazow! You are the ancient red dragon. At this point, you reach over the table, reach past the DM screen, grab the red dragon stat block and be like, Look at me. I'm the bad guy now. <laughs> Why is he cockney? <laughs> now, there are a few advantages to being an ancient red dragon. Namely, you get legendary actions and resistances. Because unlike with true polymorph, which states that if you transform into a legendary creature, you don't get legendary actions, there's no ruling in Magic Jar that says if you possess a legendary creature, you don't get all that it has. And speaking of legendary actions, you don't need to be an ancient red dragon to take one. You can do one right now by liking this video and smashing that subscribe button, because that makes Daddy YouTube a very happy with your boy. Anyway, as nice as legendary actions and resistances are, you actually still maintain your original wisdom, intelligence, and charisma scores. Which might actually be a good thing. The ancient red dragon only has an 18 intelligence, and only a 15 wisdom. Again. Pathetic. And remember, you can still cast spells while in this form, unlike the true polymorph trick. Which is, you know, pretty busted. Now, if you want this sexy red dragon form to be protected against dispel magic or anti-magic fields, you can always use the clone trick I talk about in my adult gold dragon video. Sure, you might need to shrink yourself down a little bit to make the cloning process work, but believe me, it is worth it to be a red dragon boyo. And there you have it. Please randomly smash buttons down below this video to tell Daddy YouTube that I'm doing a good job and to actually show my content to people. Also, seriously, Thanks for the 1,000 subs. You are amazing. See you next time.